tell us a little bit about your experience and your work in food insecurity and housing insecurity. I, I know that it's something I know you for, like you hold these mm -hmm. weekly, bi-weekly meetings. You set a table that was far broader and more impactful than any hunger table or table that I've seen to address that issue in all my years. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, that work is still ongoing. And in fact, um, people are meeting weekly. Uh, we have a food, hunger, and agriculture work table, working table, working group um, that's been meeting since the summer of 2019, I believe. And, um, you know, that work group initially came together. There were people who've been working on agriculture and, you know, helping our farmers have more resilient and sustainable and economically viable local agriculture. And there are people who've been working in the hunger space. But one of the bridges that had not been gapped, one of the gaps that had not been bridged right. um, was how do we reconnect our food system to actually feed our people? And, you know, there's such an amazing local food movement, but our entire agricultural system is oriented in this state towards export. We actually export over 90% of our agricultural products, and yet we have the highest rates of hunger in the entire United States. And during the pandemic, it's grown, um, you know, many fold. And so um, we start convening this work group to really understand how do we reconfigure our food system to address hunger at its most structural roots. And um, we had already been meeting when the pandemic began and that work group, because everyone was at the table from the food banks to agricultural producers to state agencies, tribal governments, advocates, um, had already formed, you know, relationships and, and this community um, that became a space where a lot of emergency food relief happened over the last year. We worked a lot to put together um, an emergency food package that passed during the special session um, and, you know, reconnected. Um, you know, one of the things that's interesting about this pandemic is it's made possible things that, you um, you know, before the pandemic, we couldn't kind of like break the knot around our food system. And um, I've often told this story, but one of the most beautiful sort of examples of that was at the very beginning of the pandemic, um, we were on this call with hundreds of people all over the state. It was before we started using Zoom. Um, people couldn't unmute and there was all this echo. And through all this echo and noise, um, somebody got on from the Northern Navajo um, Nation and said, we're having a food shortage up here. We can't get food on the ground. And somebody from the Agricultura Network in the South Valley said, we have food. And they exchanged phone numbers on that call. And the next week, thousands of pounds of food from the South Valley were driven up to the Navajo Nation. Beautiful. And let's, let's, let's land it there. Yeah. I mean, I think people get a sense that this is not something that has been political for you, but this has been part of your fabric and your passion. Yeah. And yeah. I think that taking this conversation from a state level to a federal level uh, really could translate into something very, very powerful. So I appreciate that work there.